Okay, in this tutorial, we're going to make the classic snake game where you start off as a tiny little snake and you eat apples uh, which randomly appear in different places on the screen in order to become a bigger snake. Uh, watch out for hitting the edges and also hitting your own body segments when you turn uh, because that's end of game. Okay, let's get started. Let's do the three steps we have to do to get to the uh, scratch on the internet and that is go to the menu, go to internet, and go up to the Brave Browser and click on that. The Brave Browser is going to ask for a password to give you access to save passwords and stuff. What you want to put in here is Shift 4, which is the dollar sign, and TEM. Once you have Shift dollar sign TEM in there, just click Unlock. Brave should open and automatically have you in the Scratch website. It also has a tab for the Snap website, so you have a choice on which one of these you want to use to follow this instruction. You could use either. Let's do, I'm going to choose Scratch and uh, since I'm choosing Scratch I'm going to close the Snap tab and that gives me more processing power in my Scratch game. So close the tab that you're not going to use. A couple things we're not going to use as well that we need to clear up and that's the tutoring window so just click X beside that. Also, we don't need Scratchy in this game, so if I hover over them, get to that garbage can, and click on that. To start off, we're going to have to make the first segment of our snake. So we'll go to the Choose a Sprite icon and up to the little paintbrush, and click on that. First, select a color for your snake. I selected a purple fill and a black outline. You select yours. Your snake segment could be square or round. I'm selecting square. You select the shape you want to work with. Uh, then we want to draw the shape right in the center. Uh, but we want it to be really small. So hold down control on the keyboard and roll your mouse wheel in. Bringing that center in close enough that you can see the individual squares. Draw your shape so it's no bigger and four of these little squares wide and four of these little squares tall and it appears uh, right above right uh, with the uh, center mark right in the middle so you see that center mark you want to make sure it's right in the middle just like that so draw yours in okay that's it for our first character let's go back to the sprite choose a sprite tool and we'll go to search this time. So choose a sprite tool and search. With all the selection here, let's uh, make it a little easier by typing in the word apple. And then click on the apple. We're gonna start off by coding the apple, so make sure that's selected, and then go to code. From the events category, this is the only block you'll need, so go ahead and grab that. From the control category, you're going to need these three, a forever, a wait, and a wait until block. Grab those, please. From the motion category, you only need this one block, and that's the go to random position block. Find that. You'll need two blocks from the looks category, and that is the show and hide block. From sensing, you're going to need this block, the touching color block. For our final block, you want to go to the variables category and find this change by block. Uh, also, while you're there, just make a variable called snake len. We're going to use it later to control the length of the snake. All right, perfect. You've got all the code you need for the apple. Now let me show you what I want you to have it do. So I'm going to hit play. The apple is to hide at the start of the game. Within two seconds, though, it appears in a random location. There, it just waits. Nothing changes. It just waits until the snake comes over and makes contact with it. Then, it's going to change that variable value and increase it by a little bit, say 0.2. But then it'll appear, after two seconds, in a new random location and wait for that process to repeat. So, I'll do it a couple more times appears after two seconds, makes contact with the thing, 
changes the variable value, reappears in a new location, and waits to be eaten again. That's the process. See if you can use the code blocks given to do exactly this. So putting this code together, that's going to be entirely up to you. However, you can call your instructor over for a little help. Uh, as for this tutorial video, this is the last bit of help I'll give you. Is uh, Here's the steps written down in just text form. Um, and uh, it might help you uh, put it together uh, yourself. So finish that up and uh, we'll move on after you're done. One bit of help I might give you is sizing your apple. We didn't have any code in here for sizing your apple. There's a good chance your apple is uh, too big at 100%. So you can just go to this spot right here and change that to 50% or maybe even smaller so it's uh, a similar size to the square that is the head of your snake. Okay, so there you go. Okay, here's the code blocks you need to put together for your next challenge. So all I want you to do here is, of course, use that starting code block. Uh, give your snake a place to start, you know, uh, somewhere in the center of the screen or up to the upper left. You can pick the numbers. Um, and then we got to set the snake length to an initial value. And um, the snake length is really just a delay period. It's something less than a second. So you're going to use a decimal value like 0.5 or 0.2 or 0.3. I use point two, but go ahead and set up uh, the first three blocks of code the way you want to be your initial uh, values for these code blocks. Alrighty then, you've got another bit of a challenge coming and it involves using uh, some blocks to get your snake moving when you use keyboard input. So the first things I want you to find are from the control area and uh, that's going to be this forever loop and for if then statements. So go ahead and find those and bring them into your code. And the next thing I'll have you find is in your sensing and that's just for uh, key space pressed. Now these will be changed of course to not all be space but you just need the blocks for now so grab them. Okay and then uh, grab yourself four point and direction blocks and one uh, move 10 block and you'll be ready for the challenge coming up. All right, then here's what I want you to do with the code I just gave you. Uh, when your game starts, your uh, snake is going to go to the center. That's what we coded before. Uh, but with the code you have, I want it to be moving. And then that movement direction, not the movement itself, but the movement direction is controlled by keys on the keyboard. So popular choices are WASD, W up, A left, D right, S down. Um, some other popular choices are the up arrow, left, right, and down arrow. Um, so you're going to use the keys of your choice to control the direction of your uh, snake. Um, and also, uh, it's going to be moving all the time, even when you're not clicking a key. The key just sets the direction, and then the code will just take that direction and keep moving it continuously. Okay, so that's your challenge. We better get started. Okay, so we're not going to show you the answer to this coding challenge either until way at the very end. Um, so this is the last help you'll get. Unless you call your instructor over it, then you can get as much help as you want. So here's what you're going to do. You're going to cycle through the following. When W or the up arrow is pressed, you choose set direction up. When A or the left arrow is pressed, set direction left. When S or down arrow is pressed, set the direction down. And when D and or right arrow is pressed, set the direction right. Then, once that choice is made, your character moves. And you cycle through it again. Okay, see if you can get that done with the code we gave you earlier. Here's two new code blocks. Um, create clone of myself, you're gonna grab that one, and you're gonna grab a weight block. Bring those into your code for sprite one, or your snake head. Now here's what you wanna do with that code. Is, well, let me get it started. Here's what you wanna do with that code, is now you want to have the character move immediately create a clone of itself and then introduce that little bit of delay so it's not moving so fast. Now the default one second is far too long so you're gonna have to use a much smaller number but try and figure out, figure out a number that is going to uh, get it moving well, as quickly as you see here. So hopefully you got this going and you are drawing this uh, tail that just keeps growing and growing and growing and it never gets any shorter. So that's what we're going to try and tackle now. Uh, and I want you to find these code blocks. 
So the tail is made up of clones, so let's grab this code block to uh, deal with the clones as they're created. Uh, we'll also need to use that variable you created called snake len, and um, I'll delete this cone, clone, sorry, delete this clone block and await block again. So there's your four blocks for the next challenge. When I start as a clone, the variable, the delete this clone and await block. Your code, once put together, should achieve this. Your uh, snake should no longer draw a continuous um, long body. Uh, what's going to happen here is you're going to generate a clone, you're going to allow the clone to exist only for a certain period of time, and then you're going to delete it. Uh, so make sure your code is doing that before you move on to the next part of the tutorial. So to give you a hint, here's some text that kind of outlines the logic. When a clone is created, you're going to wait the amount of seconds that's contained in the variable snake len, and then you're going to delete the clone. That's it. So make sure your code accomplishes those three things. It starts when the uh, clone is created, it waits the amount of seconds in the variable snake len, and then it deletes the clone. So here's another code block I want you to find. It's this one right here, change color effect. And you could use any number here from, oh, say 100 to uh, 25 or something. Uh, you just want the clones to start in a different color. I'm going to use 100, and we're going to introduce it to the code block we just finished. So we want to do that probably immediately after the clone is created. So put this in your last code block of code immediately after the clone is created. This is how your code should test after you get it done. And you can see I've got uh, now a purple uh, color that's the start of the snake, and then it's kind of yellowy, yellowy green after that. So uh, depending on your change percentage, uh, you'll get different colors, but just make sure they're not both the same color. Okay, so let's test it out. I'm just going to go to the corner, make the window full size, I'll click play, and then I chose WSD, so lower work and fine, and you can see I sped it up a little bit um, just by reducing the amount of the wait time. Uh, eating apples works fine, growing works fine. So what do we have to add? We have to add some collision detection. Uh, something bad's got to happen to us when we hit the sides. Something bad also has to happen to us when we hit ourselves, when we turn so quickly that we run into our own body segments. So that's what we're going to do next. But why don't you fire up the game and see if it tests as you see mine is here. So here are the blocks for your next challenge. I want you to find this if block, this touching block, and this stop all block. I want you to put these blocks together in such a way that if we're touching any edge, the game stops. Okay, that's your challenge. So I'm not going to show you how to put this code together or how you're going to change uh, the drop down menu here in touching, uh, but once you've got your code together so that it does detect that you're touching an edge and would stop the game if you do, I want you to put it in here right under move 15 steps. All right, so this is my answer to the challenge. You can see I blocked it out so you can't see it, but I wanted to show you how you're gonna test it. So if you've got your code in there, go ahead and click play. Be pretty quick on the keyboard so you don't crash right away, but you just wanna make sure that no matter what side you crash into, the game stops. And do that for the top and the bottom. And if your code is working, you can move on to the next step. Otherwise, you're gonna to have to ask your instructor for a little help. Okay, so here are the next code blocks I want you to find. It's another if-then block, then the sensing of two colors touching block, and a stop off. So what is it we want to do with this code? Well, this code here is supposed to allow us to get our guy the ability to detect when he collides into his own body segments, like that. So we need to be able to detect when the head color detects or collides with any of the body colors. Okay, so let me give you a second and see how you tackle that problem. Okay, so what you should have done is you should have realized this is going to go in here, this is going to go in here, and your color detection is as simple as clicking on this, going down to this little eyedrop detector, clicking on that one, and then you go to the one color, the head color, and you click on that, and that becomes the head color. So if you haven't done that so far, go ahead and do it now. 
and then we'll tackle a problem. So here is your problem. When the game runs, you can see the body segments, but as soon as you stop the game, either by dying like that, or by simply hitting the red stop sign, you no longer have any body segments to click. So that's the challenge I want you to solve. How can you change the code here temporarily so that you don't lose any body segments? Okay, so I made a couple changes to the code. It really didn't change anything as, as so much as just temporarily pull some things out. Um, and this is how it behaves now. So even when I hit stop, everything still disappears. But when I don't hit stop and I crash, this stuff hangs around long enough for me to detect the color. So why don't you see if you can make it do something like that. If you can't, go ahead and ask your instructor for help. Once you got the help from the instructor, you should be able to do something like this. You should be able to just click on the color, just like before, click on the detection tool, and then go over to your body segment color and click on that. And then you'll have both of these set up so that you've got the color of the head detecting when it's touching the color of the body, and then it'll stop all. Then you can just put this place, this segment, into the code below where you put your other code. In this video slide, I'm going to do something different. I'm going to show you some code that I added that you don't have, and you try and figure out what it does. So here it is. It's actually uh, an if condition wrapper around each of the key movements. So if key D is pressed, then I point in direction 90 degrees and I go that way. But I put this if wrapper around it, and it has a logical operator. So it says not direction equals negative 90 then do this. So why did I do this? Why did I have this code around this point in direction? And why are these numbers always opposite directions of each other? Okay, if you can figure that out, tell your instructor what the answer is. And if you like what it does for you, maybe put it into your own code. All right, so now you got a pretty playable game. Uh, your character gets longer, you have some dangers in crashing into the uh, sides or crashing into yourself, but I'm going to leave you with a couple challenges um, that you can do on your own. One, we need a way to know that we ended up with a score this game that was better than last game, or not as good. So you need a way to score it. So that's one challenge. And the other challenge is, maybe once you reach a certain score, something should move faster or there should be some kind of new danger imposed. So there's a leveling up involved. Okay, so those are the two challenges that I'll leave with you. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Thanks for giving it a go.